Yo, what's good, bro? Today we're discussing the brands to watch for 2024. Now, we did this last year and it performed quite well. Last year we had By Wave, Main Character, Archive Lives, No Face Studios, CGI, Grimy Kids, Nola, Vane, Mono Thomas, and I'm Going Psycho, which revamped to above all else. Looking back, it's been a very good year for those brands who all had their own things to showcase. Now in 2024, it means I have to show you the new brands to watch. 2023 saw a lot of new talents rise and a lot of brands who are already doing their thing reach new breakthroughs. If you're new here, we're a platform documenting streetwear culture and emerging brands globally. Subscribe, turn on bell notifications, stay connected on our other socials, let's get into the video. Now the first brand to watch is Arif Ferdu. I hope I said that correctly. Now if you're from the UK, this shouldn't come as a surprise. The Lover's Kiss sweater was everywhere last year and they went on to release multiple colours after the original colourway released. They also have a couple other knits available in which they have received just as much love as their signature knits. It's difficult to think of another brand doing knits like them here in the UK, they're arguably the kings of this space. Now Arif started his brand with the student loan he received whilst attending uni. He invested the funds into his samples before building his portfolio of wearable art pieces. The self-titled brand started from Arif's interest in politics and global issues, before changing his focus to more positive connotations such as peace and love. Emotion is something that's deeply rooted in the basis of Arif's brand. It's fundamental to his design language and also crosses over with his love for art. You can often see Arif's pieces possess strong vibrant colours as well as quotes and poems resonant with fellow lovers. In 2024, Arif looks to expand into women's wear, which he's already briefly tapped into. He also looks to create more beautiful designs whilst catering to a wider audience with simple and timeless products. Now we actually did a post on Arif, so you can check that out in the description. Next we have Lost Boys Channel. Now this is one brand that really ran the UK streetwear scene. Hailing out of Nottingham in the UK's Midlands, the Lost Boys are a collective tapping into multiple industries such as music, events, clothing and more. The group brags the Cool Kids Never Die slogan and is comprised of 10 members including musicians 5EB, Easy Marts and S5, influencers and models Luke and Moles, photographer Mig, and DJ Chef D, as well as Feds, Running and Eds. But don't let these labels define them as what the group has achieved up until now shows that they do way more than what we see. Their product catalogue is mainly comprised of tracksuits, jerseys and accessories inspired by sport life and football. Their clothes almost have a sense of this if you know you know all around them, where it represents them, their background and upbringing. It makes total sense why their mission statement is to bring fashion to the block. The subcultures attached to this style are relevant to those mainly across Europe and South America, but they're even making their way into further areas of the world. The group exudes Atlanta energy and with the goal of putting Nottingham on the map, the Lost Boys are far from just a single city based group. Their wild 2023 saw them travel all over the map, including London, Lithuania, Austria and more. Everything from the swag and authenticity these guys carry makes them a promising brand to keep your eyes on in 2024. Next we have x War NYC. Now this is one of my personal favourite brands out of the US. They exude this raw and industrial aesthetic where they let their design do the talking. Their designs carry almost a dark like energy that's still packed with detail and thought. For me, their highlight product is their zip-up hoodie, which has this beautiful shade of yellow to it. The piece originally comes in a charcoal grey, but the yellow edition was a genius colour selection. It also possesses a waffle-like texture and is finished off with light distressing, as well as a light wash where we see the hoodie packed with hues of yellow and dark grey. The owner explained how the brand name can be interpreted as war. The deeper meaning behind the brand, however, is quite similar to war itself. Their About Us page reads, War to me is more than just a line, more than a brand, more than just a here now gone later trend. War is a mental fight, the push through, the tunnel vision and the mind focus for reality. As people and dreamers, we are our own worst enemy. No one can alter us nor our destiny but ourselves. Any goal that can't be touched can be reached. As dreamers, it's a war to fight for our dream, to breathe, sleep, eat it. Mentally fighting through words of discouragement, lack of faith and lack of hope. War is a combination of fashion and a representation of a person's day-to-day -day battle, all in one, with the manifestation of streetwear. The brand has been on steady growth last year. But I got a feeling that in 2024, they're on different timing. Next, we have Survival Energy. Now, this brand is owned by Miguel dos Santos, the young guy currently championing the sport life movement in Brazil. Miguel has been able to develop an aesthetic for himself that appeals to a global audience. He takes frequent trips abroad and around Brazil, showcasing his style in the overall streets of the world. When he comes to the UK, it's only love with the likes of Clint, Lengers, Sloan and more, all embracing him every time he touches down. Dubbing the New World Order in Latin America mantra, Miguel looks to present the raw streets of Sao Paulo to the world, putting his country on the map. As you can imagine, the brand's name stands for possessing a strong and resilient mindset despite your environment and the place you grew up in. The streets of Brazil can be dangerous, but Miguel's brand is almost like a beacon of light for people to have belief they can survive and even make it out. Their designs follow the traditional nature of streetwear pieces, where we see graphics embedded onto staples such as t-shirts and more. Survival Energy is a message to you that you can make it work for your brand wherever you are and with whatever you have, regardless of what you think might be stopping you. 
The global reach of Miguel and his brand is only increasing and that's why it's a brand to watch in 2024. When it comes to our friends over in Australia, there's one brand in particular that's been running the riot across the streets and that brand is Judah Tribe. The brand was launched out of Melbourne in 2018. The owner who maintains a sense of mystery around him started from humble beginnings and still presents that today as he started his journey making $20 to $30 a day selling stickers at 16 years old. Shortly, his friend bought one of his t-shirt designs for $20, marking the start of what we see today. The tribe in the name represents the authenticity and community element the owner wants to push forward. Part of his vision is to put Australia on the map for streetwear amongst the states and Europe. His rise includes sneaking backstage into shows for music artists such as Reggie Snow and Mick Jenkins. Alongside this, it allowed him to make a name for himself among the music industry over there, resulting in him designing tour merch and having some of Melbourne's rising artists rock his arms. Toward the back end of last year, the brand hosted a collab pop-up with Central Seas brand Cineworld. As you can imagine, Sydney went wild. This isn't the first time Judah has done this, as he has a neat record of shutting down cities with his pop-up events. Judah Tribe's connection to London runs deeper as in 2022, he linked up with Clint for a Judah X Cortez pop-up event, where the pair gave away free gear. Then in 2023, he ran a collab with artist Sloan. This is just another street with brand creating a lot of noise for themselves and in 2024 I have no doubt they'll create even more of it. We now head over to Paris to shine light on a designer named Celeste Claudette who graduated from the prestigious IFM Paris Fashion School. The designer initially put himself on the radar with his graduate runway collection with the pieces themselves going on to receive plenty of online attention. Celeste's run didn't end there as one day he ended up receiving a message from ASAP Rocky who found him all naturally. At the time, Rocky was doing a collab with Puma and the F1, and so he was inquiring about wanting a jacket made for the campaign. Next thing you know, Rocky's wearing the piece loud and proud in the final lookbook. Now, Celeste actually approached us to cover this, and next thing you know, they grew exponentially once the other pages picked it up and also covered it. Being known and recognised for your work is important for any designer, and this is a moment Celeste deserved. As a little backstory, his journey started by upcycling leather jackets from thrift shops and secondhand markets. The experimentation with these pieces made him develop a love for leather. However, there was two issues. It was an expensive material and it wasn't very sustainable. To tackle these hurdles, Celeste turned his head to vintage leather jackets that had already been pre-owned. These jackets then became new through Celeste deconstructing them, playing with finishings and painting on them to achieve new outcomes such as textures and colour combinations, giving these designs a vibrant and striking look. This unique design language allows him to be set apart from a lot of designers and that's why that's a brand to watch in 2024. The next brand on our list is Outlaw USA. While the name may suggest otherwise, it's a UK based brand with heavy American influence. My guess is that the owner has American roots, but when you look at their page, it's not hard to see how the USA has been of influence to him. Aside from the obvious flags, everything from the piece selection, the use of camouflage, the iconography, the fonts used and the references made has a real southern cowboy aesthetic to it. It's safe to say that he's bringing two worlds together being streetwear and the wild wild west. Some of the highlight pieces include the one of one cactus juggernaut jacket, the FBI bomber jacket, the Deadwood camo set, and a reverse cargo hoodie. Let's not forget the time he pulled up to McDonald's with his own flea menu. One of my favourite aspects of the brand is how Oscar pairs patterns and colours. I find the colour palette of his designs interesting, and somehow they always work. Oscar is also a designer with a ton of unreleased pieces. The amount of samples he previews always keeps me wondering when he's dropping. Hopefully we get to see more of those drops in 2024. Next we have PDF Channel. Now this is one of the brands of the year for me personally. There was a period where I saw their samples everywhere and it was all for the right reasons. If you're involved in the scene, you may have seen their Inui glasses around or even their mini bags. The biggest viral piece was probably a chunky boot which ended up being worn by artists such as Drake and Loyai. The brand is based out of Italy, founded by Domenico Formichetti. Now I believe this is actually his second brand, with PDF being influenced by Domenico's love for extreme sports, graphics and underground subcultures. On a more detailed perspective, Dominico stated how PDF stems from items he wished he could find and add to his closet. This aligns with the brand's catchphrase, if it already exists, it's not necessary. PDF's catalogue is largely comprised of ultra baggy silhouettes over pieces such as denim sets, workwear, hockey jerseys and more. As much as Dominico is a fan of graphics, it seems that textures are also a strong favour of his, with a myriad of different ways and textures being used by him. Interestingly enough, the designer also has a stash of unreleased samples that he's far from sharp previewing within his vibrant feed of dumps. With the year they had in 2023, I don't see what's stopping them from topping it in 2024, especially if he drops those samples. Next, we turn our heads to Mad Frenzy, a European brand with the goal to take the seriousness out of fashion through their playful brand personality. Now, this doesn't come at the expense of designs as they're still very much backed by thought, quality and creativity. Just last year, their spiker shoe went viral, gaining them a whole lot of attention and anticipation on its drop. They then applied the same concept to a hoodie and went on to explain how the concept was inspired by both punk and biology. Some of the highlights of the brand include their umbrella, 
their customers hang out in some of the lookbook images. With global expansion on their mind, having done fashion showrooms in both Paris and Tokyo, the brand aims to do pop-ups starting this year. Here's a little more about the goals that the owner's trying to reach. From collection to collection, we're trying to create new technologies or reinvent the existing ones. The most important thing for us is to keep innovations and fun coming. The fashion industry can be snobby and too serious, but Mad Frenzy's presence brings a sense of authenticity and a youthful spirit giving the scene a new perspective. I hope that presence only grows in 2024. Headless Forever is a brand out of Toronto, Canada. The owner goes by Headless Flyboy and has gone on to build some of a cult following for himself out there in North America. Flyboy started his journey getting inspiration from calls, resulting in the concept of headless models and an animated aesthetic when it comes to branding. The designer would post his concepts online and gain feedback from those around him. After making things for himself for a while, he then went on to sell them after people pushed him for it, asking how they can get their hands on the pieces. After seeing a gap in the Toronto streetwear scene, Flyboy elevated the brand from just screen printed hoodies and t-shirts to jeans, full zips and fitted hats with more complex designs. Another step up was the release of an embroidered tracksuit which started off as a one of one for a friend. But once he received the sample, Flybo knew he had a hit product in the making. Last year they dropped a hockey jersey after sponsoring a local under 12 hockey team. In 2024, the brand is setting their sights on women's wear which I'm very excited to see along with anything else they release. Our last and honourable mention goes to Outbreak which is actually an Indian brand looking to break out on an international level. The brand actually sees itself as a quote unquote creative experiment in motion as opposed to just simple labels such as streetwear, avant-garde or futurism. Outbreak is dedicated to exploring ideas that may seem impractical by societal standards. Instead of simply formulating and executing ideas, Outbreak creates an ecosystem where various elements interact and observe the creative outcome. What makes Outbreak unique is their focus on unexpected products, which they call antibodies. They strive to create designs that lead to unforeseen results and embrace diverse design languages within a single collection. By venturing into impractical ideas and proportions, they uncover hidden potential and engage in a dynamic dialogue between creativity and experimentation. Outbreak's distinctiveness also lies in its exploration of other design realms, including architecture, industrial design and 3D printing. They constantly explore how their innovative designs can be integrated into different creative disciplines. Through this multidisciplinary approach, they challenge conventional thinking and aim to expand their possibilities of design. There are many streetwear brands from the place where they're from that get and deserve the recognition they need, but Outbreak is a brand I've been keeping tabs on in 2023 and you should too in 2024. Now that was all for today's video. Which brand will you be keeping on your radar in 2024 and which brand do you think will have the biggest year? Let me know below. In the meantime, do all the stuff you know you should do and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.